Okay, so let's go ahead and look here now. Um, what are what are the structures? Um, what's your definition? What are the structures? The theology call to action. Um, let's let's talk first about characteristics. What are common characteristics? Uh, I think all of them they have salutation. Okay. So let's talk through this here. So number one, they have a salutation. And also they identify as uh, Paul as the author. Okay, so let's just let's make it more so obvious. Yeah, so that's that's really good as far as the um hold on let me put this up here. So let's um so let's 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 take a step back though. Let's do um they have a identified author. We're we're thinking general. Identified author in your specific instance, it's Paul. Right. What else? What uh, else do I we think have? that all of them they have also closing. Closing. Okay, great. So there's a closing, um, a closing statement. Anything else? Uh, the body of them, they have a sense of exhortation. Okay, so so there's a body, there's a body that's primary content. And then, and then with the body, there is a, what you said, there was a, um, uh, what was that second part you said about the body? Uh, like they have a, a sense of exhortation. Yes. No. So, so there within the body, there's there's a fundamental uh, exhortation. Excellent. There's exhortation fundamental. This is um, part one. And then what, what's the, uh, so there's, there's, there's a huge aspect of exhortation. What's the other huge aspect? Thanksgiving and salutation. Okay. Okay. But, but think about large picture. So um, exhortation is fundamental. Where, what's the fundamental topic of the first half of Ephesians? If you're thinking about the, Exhortation is more about doing. Teaching right? theology. Yeah, there you go. Uh, dead on. So there's there's a big aspect of theology. This is um. This is um. Uh, knowing. Right. This is knowing. What else do we have? Anything else? Well, the structure. Okay. Okay. Well, let's talk about let's talk about the. So we so we had an identified author. Is there any other character that's typical in this characteristics? Anything else? You have an author. If you have an author, what else must you have? I don't remember one of the letters uh, include Timothy next to Paul. Okay, but the opposite of the author, who, who is the who is the author writing to? Uh, the audience, the people. Yeah, great. Memphis. Excellent. There's the there's the there's the audience. Excellent. 
So we got author, we have audience. Um, great. Okay. And then just two other things that are typical. I included, um, I included themes. There's typically a theme, right? Sometimes you know it, sometimes you don't. What's the theme of, 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 of Romans? Salvation. What's the th salvation? So, uh, but what's the, what's the big word in Romans salvation, but what's the other big word? Justification. Justification. Yeah, but um, the 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 content, the content of Christ is what gospel, right? Gospel. Uh -huh. You got gospel. Um, this is just an example here. Um, in Galatians, the theme is that of justification. Maybe you want to nuance this. Fair enough. There's other there's other ways, but that's that's a typical theme. We could talk about salvation. We can talk about uh, sanctification. Right. There's a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different <laughs> themes here. Um, great. Okay. So then let's look, let's talk for a moment about, so let's talk about structure. How did you, how did you see the structure? Let's talk about structure for a moment. What did, what was what's what's the typical structure of the, the epistle? Um Peter or Jorge? Did you did you did you figure out a typical structure? Peter, I want you to answer this time. Oh, can you hear me, Pastor? I can hear you. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Uh, about the structure, uh, introduction. Okay, so, and this is typical, right? It's, it, it was across the board, right? It's typical, right? So you have introduction. What else do you have? And body. Yep. And closing. And then you have the closing. Now, this is not typical and there's differences, but typically what you'll have and within the body, you have two main structures. You have theology and you have exhortation. Right. And and this could be with theology and exhortation, this could be either. It could be either um, referring to um, uh, this could be um, like a, it, this could be just big T, big E. This is like Romans. Or this could be like uh, Hebrews where it is T, E. T E like that. Does that make sense? It's mean to say that they're 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 isolating back and forth. It's almost like a um a relationship like this. Does that make sense? You track and so that he'll give a theology, then he'll call to action. He'll say, This is who Moses is, Jesus is greater than Moses. Can believe, do not harden your hearts. And then it goes into exhortation from the theology. So, big idea here, and maybe you've heard this before, maybe you haven't. Have you heard of the indicative is the foundation for the imperative? Have you heard of that before? Yeah. Okay. And that's that's typical. So what 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 so what we're saying here is indicative or the theology is the foundation for the imperative the exhortation
Are you tracking there with me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. This is super cool. Okay, any questions or comments or that makes sense? Uh, it makes sense. So, it's good. So, any questions? Oh, uh, for me, I don't have a question, but for me, I uh, cannot get much, but I try to follow. <laughs> it was hard. It was hard for you. Yeah, it's hard for me. So, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I confuse. So it's okay, Pastor, but I try to follow. Okay. For your is it yeah. is it a little bit better now, or it's still hard to understand? I think a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, the big idea, what you want to think about is. When we think genre, think think style or mode of writing. Okay. Maybe that's hard to imagine, but we need to be thinking like that. Okay. Um, so then let's let's do let's do something, let's do Let's do it. So you did epistle. Let's do one more. Okay. Let's do one more. Just maybe we can try this here now. So um, let's do one more and we'll, we'll end it here. And then the, so the assignment is what I want you to do is I want you and I'll, and I'll give you the assignment in the, in the Google form, but I'm going to have you for your, for your epistle, your location, you're going to have to identify the, the genre and the subgenre. And then you're going to give me description. So it's going to be similar to what you just did. Okay. And so repetition is the key. All right. So in your assignment, the next step in the hermeneutical process is to identify the genres. Okay. So let's do a parallel example here. And, and um, let's think about this here. So uh, let's do, let's do uh revelation. <laughs> so, Revelation, turning your Bibles to Revelation. Um, let's go to Revelation. You can see it on the left here. Okay, so. Revelation is, is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and who keep what is written in it for the time is near. Okay, so let's, as we think about Revelation, we want to ask, Let's ask the question, what is the genre? Now, let's briefly go to our notes. Okay, so we're going down to our notes and we're looking at the list of genres. Okay, so looking at the at the genres, what genre do you think Revelation is? You have the whole list there. Which one? We're so we're looking. Okay, so this is so. Which so so let's write so good. Number nine, apocalyptic. Okay, so the one option could be apocalyptic. Or 
or literally apocalyptic is in, in that that that's a transliteration from apocalypsis, which is uh, revelation. Okay, so we have revelation here. So that's one possibility. What is another possibility here? Allegory. Allegory? Allegory. Okay, but so remember, we're looking at book genres, so it could not be uh -huh. su a subgenres within. So what are the, uh, give me one more possible genre besides Prophet. apocalyptic. Prophetic. Okay, so let's write it down here, prophetic. Now, there is there's basis for both, okay? In 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 Revelation one one, we have revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. So there is there is a there is a basis for the possibility. This is literally, this is literally apocalyptic. Okay. Now, this is the, t the challenge though. Um, and then let's just come down here. John to the seven churches. So we have an, so we have here in What's the third possibility? We have an identification of an author. We have an audience. We have a salutation. We have an introduction. What is the third possibility of this genre? ceremony that sort of it okay but but so so thinking here though what are these these characteristics what did you where did you identify these as being what genre story epistolary right yeah so some people will talk about this being epistolary genre And then, have you heard of the author Grant Osborne? Grant Osborne, have you heard of Grant Osborne? Yeah, he, he actually says it is a apocalyptic prophetic epistle. <laughs> That's the genre. So, my question to you is, who is right? Who is right here? And why? As you're thinking about this, let's write this down here. We want um, the scripture to tell us. What would John want you to identify if John was answering the question? Not not whether the character because the characteristics could be how does John describe his book? What is the descriptive word for John in his words? Which one? Where is the descriptive word of John in in this? Jorge. Look at verses one one to three. How does John describe it in his words? This is the testimony. Okay, but look here. How does he describe, if he's using his own words to describe the book, what does he describe it as? Let's write this down here. This is the words of John. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. 
yeah uh this prophecy <laughs> yeah so let's uh, now you have the answer but i want to make it strong for you okay so number one he calls it the words of this prophecy so it's not the words of this apocalypse it's not the words of this letter it's the words of this prophecy blessed are those who hear and keep what is written for the time is near so then what let, let's let's search this word here so then this is we're thinking hermeneutics we have a question okay this is our question here so as we think hermeneutics i'm not just giving you the content i'm helping you answer the question so number one we find this answer we find this answer by reading we find the answer by reading and then number two right number two we we're going to do a word search once we discover once we discover this we're gonna do a word search so let's do a word search here really quick and we'll be done this evening <laughs> Blessed is the one. Okay, here we go. Um, blessed is the one who keeps the words of this prophecy. So then this is not only J John says it once, it's times two, right? It's times two. Look down. Do not seal up the words of this prophecy of this book. So now it's not just the words of the prophecy. It's the words of the prophecy of this book. Times two, this is this is times three, right? So this is what John wants you to see. 20 to 18, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. Anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy. <laughs> so this is where... I don't want to take what Osborne says. I want, so this is times five. This is times four. This is times five. John wants us, John tells us what it is. The prophecy, okay? So there are specific descriptions then of what a prophecy looks like, okay? So I will share, you have this already if you download it. Read through, part of your assignment is to read through these notes, okay? To get a better understanding, all right? And so um, any questions or comments before we close? It, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, possible. Do you feel a little bit better about genre? <laughs> a teeny bit better. <laughs> yeah, I guess that. <laughs> Now I have two or three additional hours of genre, like working through these. I have to upload the videos for another class. I will upload yeah. them and then you can have access to them. Okay. So we, I, I talk through more genres. We look at parables, but at least for this purpose of this class, you, I, you, you have a good understanding of how important genre is. So let me ask a question in your other hermeneutics class. Did you really discuss genre Jorge? Uh, really. <laughs> oh my goodness now you know we, yeah we did but not much yeah. <laughs> not so much like you now yeah. you understand how important this is this is so big yeah, yeah. in filipino it's it's so brung so brung lucky so brung lucky it's big <laughs> <laughs> so read read these notes there's a lot more if I can find a good book, I will I will share it. At least this is a good introduction. It gives you just the fundamental characteristics and what you're looking for in these different genres. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a good starting point for you. But I want to stress, when you work through any book in the Bible, you have to look at the main genre and the subgenre. It has to be. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and let's close in prayer and we'll be dismissed for tonight. And I'll share these posties later today. And hopefully genre is your new top, your new topic of study in the hermeneutics. Mm -hmm. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your time, and we thank you for your guidance. I ask that your spirit would be with us, protect us from every evil deed, every scheme of Satan. He is a roaring lion searching around for whom he can devour. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bind him as you've done on the cross. Stop his work. Stop the work of his demons. Stop the fruit of his hands, the work of his hands, Father God. May your gospel go forward. May we seek to study your word. It's in your word that we have life. We thank you so much that the words are not sealed up. They are open for us to obey. Now may the love of the Heavenly Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you so much, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, Pastor, see you next week. <laughs> Blessings.